Most of the time, the Y chromosome is passed unchanged from father to son, like a last name. But sometimes little differences creep in. Like the spelling of a family name changing over time. Every so often, a harmless mutation appears on one man's Y chromosome. All his sons inherit that mutation. And all their sons. It marks all descendants like a brand. That's how Wells found that 16 million men are cousins. Their Y chromosomes all show the same mutations. That means they're all descended from one single man, a Central Asian super ancestor. But who was he? Wells and other genetic detectives pieced together the clues. The mutations cluster around one place, Mongolia. They trace to almost a thousand years ago. Scientists believe he must have been a man of power, who had many sons to pass on his family line. The clues all point to one man, Genghis Khan. The evidence is circumstantial, but compelling. Khan's empire stretched from Kazakhstan to Korea. He ruled a dynasty that lasted generations. His sons and their sons had the power and position to spread his Y chromosome. As his army swept through Central Asia, they cut down their enemies and often, it said, took their women. The result? More offspring with Genghis Khan's Y chromosome and other men's lineages destroyed forever. Genghis Khan's DNA is buried with him in an unknown grave, but his Y chromosome mutations survive in his descendants today. The research shows the Y chromosome can take us back hundreds of years. But to find scientific Adam, we must trace a man from our very beginning who fathered not millions, but billions. The payoff is almost unimaginable. An Adam who may have been the first truly modern human, whose Eden we can pinpoint, whose face we can reconstruct. This is a scientific quest, yet the idea behind our search was first written down in a document of faith, the Bible. Thousands of years before genetics, the book of Genesis tells of one man who fathered us all. The Bible gives no physical description of Adam, saying only that he's created out of dust in God's image. Adam's rib provides the raw material for the first woman, Eve. God gives them a home, the Garden of Eden. But soon, tempted by a serpent, Adam and Eve eat from the tree of knowledge and are cast out of paradise. Adam and Eve have children, and according to the Bible, this one family has grown to include everyone on earth today. The New Testament's Gospel of Luke lays out Adam's family tree generation by generation. But what if we tested someone today who claims to be linked to that lineage? Most of the people the Bible places on Adam's family tree have disappeared without a trace. Yet one stands out as a significant historical figure, Solomon, the third king of Israel. Even today, there are people who claim to be directly descended from Solomon, the Ethiopian royal family. It seems far-fetched. The Jerusalem of Solomon is 1,500 miles from Ethiopia. But the Ethiopians claim to have an extraordinary piece of physical evidence that ties them to the Holy Land.
The Ark of the Covenant was believed to contain the tablets of the Ten Commandments, the Word of God. Legend says it was kept in a temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem. Until it was taken by Solomon's son, Menelik, and later brought to a little church in Aksum in northern Ethiopia. Today, the Ethiopian royal family claims direct descent from Menelik, and so from Solomon. If that's true, their family tree connects directly to the biblical lineage of Adam. To test that lineage, we'll need a royal who'll cooperate. In 1974, Ethiopia's emperor Haile Selassie was deposed. The royal family fled into exile. We tracked down a prince who agreed to participate in our search on one condition. We can't reveal his identity. He wants to avoid accusations that he's using his link to Solomon to reclaim the throne. The prince takes a secret DNA test. A few tiny cheek cells transport us deep into the past. The DNA can reveal where the prince's ancestors came from. Could it link him to Solomon? The results are tantalizing. The prince's Y chromosome mutations do lend support to his claim. They point to Middle Eastern ancestry. But it's not definitive proof. With Genghis Khan, we had 16 million men pointing to one man. With Solomon, we may have one Ethiopian prince. There's simply not enough evidence to go on. The experiment shows how hard it can be to trace the Bible's genealogy. It's a book of faith, not forensic evidence. What the Bible is saying about creation is way beyond the scope of science. It's not about DNA and all that, it's about who we are as people. In Hebrew, the name Adam also means people. What's important about Adam is that Adam is every person. The Bible gave us the idea of Adam. But finding the scientific version will take modern genetics. If we succeed, we'll link all men today back to a scientific Adam. And maybe even pinpoint his Garden of Eden. As people move from place to place, they often end up far from where their lineage began. Our family tree is becoming tangled at the top. Tracing family lines is getting harder and harder. There's only one way to clear away the tangles. Analyze Y chromosomes from people who still live in the land of their forefathers. To get a clearer picture of our family tree, Wells is leading a research project with the National Geographic Society and IBM. It's called the Genographic Project. It's a massive undertaking. It will take years. But when he's done, Wells will be able to tell where anyone in the world comes from. Wells and his colleagues have crisscrossed the globe in search of DNA samples. From Aborigines in Australia to tribesmen in South America. They've journeyed from Central Asia to South Africa to Siberia. Wells can already tell a lot about someone's origins just using their Y chromosome. And he thinks he's found something unexpected in the background of one of America's most famous figures.